we'll jump forward here, but going from the Raptor or going from the Eagle to the Raptor, what was that like? And what year was that? Uh, that was, uh, 2007. So I'm coming off the staff. I uh, picked up for group command and I go to Tyndall Air Force Base, which is the, the FTU, the training units for it, for at the time, the Eagle, uh, the Raptor, and then the air battle managers. And so what's, what's interesting about that is you, as the commander can fly everything you own. So I'm like, all right. So I take the, uh, the senior officer course for the Raptor and it was super exciting and super fun because it's a great airplane but it's only four rides. It's, it's like how to take off and land and not, not hurt yourself in it. Right. And, and it just was like the big teaser. Right. So I do that. Uh, I think get, get to, get to Tyndall, move in, do all that kind of thing. And I go fly the Eagle cause I want to go see my squadrons. Right. So I go fly the Eagle and it's like, Oh, I'm back. I'm back with the lady I started with. Everything was right. The sticks in the center, you know, <laughs> and, and I had two sorties in the Eagle where it just felt so good. And the Raptor now was feeling kind of weird. And my uh, my commander, uh, General Walters at the time, Magoo, was like, all right, cut that crap out. No more flying the Eagle until you're an instructor pilot again in the Raptor. And I'm like, OK, sir, I can see your point. So I spent 60 days, do the full you know, syllabus, get checked out in the Raptor. And I'm OK. I mean, it's it's new, but it's, I'm OK. And then I, I, I go, hey, it's time. I can go fly the Eagle again. And I get in the Eagle and I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> it was like a totally different airplane. I'm like, what? it's not climbing out at 450. I, I can't go supersonic just without even thinking about it. This is awful. How do these guys do it? And you realize how quickly your brain trains you to what you're most current in. And it was at that point, from that point on, when I went back to the Eagle, I, I had to like really get serious about, all right, don't screw this up, make sure everything works. And I, I mean, like I, I went to a Alaska flag and I got to fly the Raptor and that, and I'm flying with the Eagles. We're doing the mixed force stuff. And those guys are working their butts off to kill somebody and not be killed. And you're just like, geez, guys, oh, my gosh, oh, this is terrible. I feel so sorry for you. You know, kill that guy, kill that guy. It was just really kind of a fun experience. Uh, but, yeah, the Raptor, uh, it did everything as an Eagle driver you wanted to do. It was just really cool. The the only experience I had with it was at a checker flag down at Tyndall. We were doing okay. missile shoots, and then we would do a you know, large force exercise in the afternoon or the morning. But going back... And then watching the Raptors tape, you know, after seeing what I saw on my radar and then seeing what they saw, I was like, well, this, this is not even fair. Now I know what you guys are just doing, just out there, just slaying, shooting, shooting, shooting. And I'm just like, I hope I get a radar contact and, oh, I'm just getting jammed. My face jammed off. This, this really sucks. What yeah. oh, well, did the Eagle at that time have an ACE of radar or is it still a Mexican? So, I mean, you're really going from the Nokia phone to the iPhone. Jump it it really us. was. It, it, it was, it was just amazing of how little SA you had in an Eagle uh, versus, versus the Raptor and how much you had to worry about getting spiked and all that kind of stuff. You know, it was just, it was just really interesting. Uh, we were doing the first B coursers going through and the whole command was freaking out. You know, these, this guy, these guys are getting this nine G aircraft at single seat, blah, blah, blah. They had a very long course. They went to Luke and did Viper stuff just to, you know, do all the, the stuff that's hard. And uh, it was interesting to see that these the, these these eight guys, I think they turned into supermen. I mean, I swear they like went right to mission commander because they had so much SA. It was big. One of my things that I never got to do was to track them down. You know, I see the old pictures from graduation and stuff like that. But I think I ran into one of them, and and I think he's in the reserves now or something like that. But I th I think we really underestimate how quickly this generation can can take on these big aircraft you know what i mean like right now in, in upt people are worried about whether they can handle all the the t38 nuances and stuff like that and yet these are the students that are playing dcs and they know what right. a single circle fight is and a two circle fight and they've got hours and hours in virtual reality simulators it's like you know i think it's just different you know because in my time it was a different experience you went from you know playing with tonka trucks to to fly fighters and I think this generation, because they got their iPhones, there's so much, it, it doesn't shock them as much. And I've actually, I've actually talked to people uh, like Lieutenant Curdles and stuff like that who deal with training and they, they don't want to give the students as much as I think they should. And I go back to my experience in the Raptor. We were like, oh no, no, don't let them go supersonic, hold back on the reins. And yet, hmm, the kids did okay. That's interesting. What does that tell you? You know what I mean? That is an interesting perspective. We talked about it with a few other guests on the podcast. And I think there's, it's the way, hey, this is the way it's always been, or this is the way I did it. 
But as technology evolves, like the planes, while they are still complex and can reach out and bite you if you don't respect it and know the systems, et cetera, the planes to a certain degree, like a Viper, I would probably say is easier to fly than an F4. You know, there's the, the way it is mech, the way it is designed, the ergonomics are there a little better, the Raptor, the F-35. And so I had a buddy who was a strike eagle, Bubba, then went to the F-35, teach him the B course. And his analogy was he would assume that most wingmen coming out of the F-35 now have that situational awareness that a four ship F-16 flight lead would have or a four ship F-15 flight lead would have. They give that wingman, hey, you now own this lane over here where that used to be a four ship of Vipers and that flight lead is managing just because of the technology, the way, you know, what that plane can do and see. Like you said, these kids that now have grown up used to being on tablets, used to playing DCS. And yeah, it's just a different, it's a different problem with that. So, you know, when you're, when you're flying the old Eagle, the old, like the A model Eagle and your computer is, I don't know, like a, like a slide rule. You, you couldn't do things, right? It was very, very simple. And when you when you got to the C model and you got to the uh, to, to the Raptor, all of a sudden you had all this SA. And so we would have as instructors, people get into big conversations like, all right, we're going to start off turning everything like halfway off. And so they don't have SA and they learn the blocking and tackling because if they don't learn the blocking and tackling, they're just going to be rubes. And it was like, wait a minute. They got all this stuff. Shouldn't we be teaching them how to use all this stuff? No, no, no. You need to turn half that stuff off. And, you, and it was very spirited, you know, technology questions. And I don't remember what side of it I came down on, but I know that when I got towards the Raptor, I started realizing, okay, this is this is dumb. You don't you don't train with half your stuff. And yet, right. you know, it <laughs> okay. was. And even we would get into like this happened. This happened in the eighties when the the nine Lima came along. All of a sudden, this fly BFM to the control zone Papa Wes, why am I doing that? I'm just going to point and shoot at the guy. You can't do that. You're not in the control zone. It's like, oh, here we go. Yeah. It's, it's so, I don't, I don't know. I, I have a feeling if you were to talk to people now, you know, the young people, the captains and majors and all that, how does the training flow? It's, it's different than what it was when I was a captain. Totally different approach because the technology is so immersive. Um, like I remember, I remember I had to go do a safety board and they let me fly the T-38. So I'm up there riding in the back seat, going, this thing's a dinosaur. You have got to be kidding me. And uh, I knew the guy in the front seat. He was one of my uh, lieutenant colonels. And so he's like, okay, sir, I'll let you fly the whole thing, but I'm not going to let you land it. And I'm like, why? And he goes, I'll show you. And so I take it to the flare. He lands it. And it's like, holy crap. Remember the stubby little wings and you're just doing this with the funky landing gear? And I'm like, okay, good call. A good call. I don't want to be that guy. And yet I then roll into that world if we don't have adversaries for the Raptor. So we're going to dual call our Raptor pilots in the T-38. And I remember thinking, oh, my gosh, are you guys nuts? And they're like, oh, no, so we're cool. We're good. You're, you're just you're just a dinosaur. But I don't know where I'm going with that story, but it just was it just was interesting to see the old technology. Uh, the more you saw the new. I think it is, it's just a tough thing for people to break that mold and wave seen it with how pilot training is changing and i think there, there's there's some good things or some bad things with it but my son he has a playstation and, and he has like ace combat some like fighter jet game it's got vr goggles i'll be honest you throw it on and this is you know rudimentary i say rudimentary playstation but if you actually had a simulator that was dedicated to it probably some of the stuff that red six is doing with yep. augmented reality yep freak like you really, I really can see the potential in like leveraging technology to make training more effective and you know, beneficial. Then utilizing it appropriately is like the key piece here, not cutting, I think taking shortcuts. But I mean, man, it is a game changer when you can go out there and actually fight the way that the plane is designed to fight. You could eat, turn on all the technology, you're not turning things off, try to make it tough like it used to be. And I always think too, you know, again, I had Emerald Fox uh, on the podcast. Uh, Kevin Strong, Gillum's another Navy guy. These love the, love the Navy brother. I always find it funny though, but like they all know the number of traps they have, and rightfully so. Oh wow! Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to land on a boat. I've said that, and I I stand by that. But um, hearing the discussion, like if you had the technology to make it easier to land on a boat, and now while well, you need to know how to do it. And you could spend, if you had to spend 10 stories, figure out how to land on a boat, but now the technology allowed you to spend five, and then you can use that technology to help you. You can spend the other five stories going out there learning how to employ your machine. 
to kill things. That's just heresy. You're just crazy, man.